Hello everyone, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you 5 ways that you can warm up your tracks in Cubase. Let's get started. In Cubase we have quite a few ways to warm up our tracks, to make them sound a little bit richer, to make them sound a little bit more analog if you want to use that word and today I'm going to show you all these tools that we have in Cubase and there are way more but we're going to keep it at five. Let's have a listen to this track, today we have something different, it's a little bit of a rock track and let's see how we can warm it up. Very typical rock track, typical rock instrumentation, drums, bass, guitars and vocals. It cannot get any simpler than this, we're going to get to the vocals a little bit later. Now let's take each one of these elements one by one and let's try and warm these channels up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to warm up our drums and the first thing that I'm going to use is the mighty Quadrafuzz. If you haven't used this plugin in Cubase, you're really, really missing out. So let's have a listen to these drums without the Quadrafuzz first, and then I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, so I want to make these drums a little bit bigger, I want the snare to have a little bit more body and maybe I want to make them a little bit more open in the top end. Now, Quadrafuzz is great for this, why? Because it's a multiband tape saturator, tube saturator, distortion, you can even add amp distortion and a decimator on each one of these bands separately. So what I like to do to warm things up in a very subtle way is I'm using the tape and the tube saturation modules. So I'm going to start adding a little bit of tape drive to the kick drum, to the low end. and in the low mids on my snare. And while I'm at it, I might add a little bit of presence to my mid range and my top end. Yes, this brings out the crack of the snare. can also make things wide, it's a really really powerful plugin but in this case I'm focusing more on the warming up side of things, so my kick and my snare. So let's listen with and without and see what we've done. Beautiful. So Quadrafuzz is my number one tool to warm up tracks in Cubase. Now I'm going to show you the next tool that is really really incredible when you want to warm up your tracks in Cubase and that's Magneto. And I'm going to add this as an extra effect to this drum kit. Let's have a listen, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of it. So it makes these drums come alive. I'm also reducing a little bit of the top end with this high frequency adjustment here, just a tiny bit. Now I'm going to use the magneto on the bass, so let's have a listen to this bass. And I'm going to reduce the high frequencies as well here. And 
and I'm very generous with the saturation on the bass because it just sounds good. You can't make it sound bad. It's really good and it doesn't affect the low frequencies. It actually makes everything sound super nice. The reason why it doesn't affect the low frequencies is because you can set your frequency range right here. So maybe I want to start adding the effect from 80 hertz. So it makes the sound way, way thicker. Now, in order to make the bass cut through the mix a little bit more, I'm going to show you another plugin, which is not the third way, but nevertheless, it's really cool, and that's that tube. And this adds a lot of amazing saturation to your sound. Let's have a listen with and without in the context of the mix. And as you can see, I'm adding a lot of harmonic content there to this bass. Now let's move on to the third way that I'm going to show you today to warm up your tracks, and that's the channel strip. And in this case, I'm going to use this on my guitars, and I'm going to use the tube saturation module that we have in Cubase built into the channel strip. Let's have a listen and let's warm up these guitars. And as you can see, the guitars sound fuller, they sound louder, but if you check the levels, you will see that the difference in volume is way, way smaller than what we perceive as loudness and as richness to the sound. Now, since we're still dealing with guitars here, I want to show you the fourth way to warm up your tracks, and this is by using the frequency EQ. So let me show you what I've done here. Let me explain a little bit the setup. First of all, I am reducing the 5K range of the guitars, and this is a dynamic EQ. So basically, when we have some frequencies that might be a little bit harsh, or they might sound a little bit fizzy, then this dynamic EQ is going to tame those frequencies, and this will result in a bigger, fuller guitar tone. Now, in order to complement this, I've added a little bit of mid-range here, and this is not a dynamic EQ. This is a normal EQ boost to add a little bit of mid-range. And the third thing that's going on here is I'm using this band, band number three, just for the sides, and I'm using this in dynamics mode, and basically when we have chugs or mutes, then we're going to get a little bit of a boost in the low mid-range, which is the thing that we perceive as warm, as rich, and this only happens for the side channels. So if I have a vocal there, that's not going to interfere with my vocal. It's not going to interfere with my bass. So I'm only using this for my side signal. So let's have a listen, and let's see how it sounds with and without. So you can see it sounds way fuller, it sounds richer, and it sounds like the guitars are bigger because they're also wider as well using this sideband for my low mid-range. Now, 
the last thing that I want to show you is the vocals, how we can warm up the vocals. And in this case, I have a little bit of a more extreme example. Here we're going to go into saturation territory to make sure that our vocals are suitable for this music genre. In this case, I've sung this guide vocal and I want to dirty it up. I want to make it really saturated and dirty to match the track. So let's listen without first and then I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do. So as you can hear, I've added the vintage compressor. It adds this really nice Fed compressor sound to the vocal. But now I want to make this really, really dirty. In this case, this is the fifth way to really, really warm up your tracks. And again, you can use it subtly or you can use it the way I'm gonna use it today, which is to completely saturate these vocals. So this is Destroyer and it's a super versatile saturation and distortion plugin. So let's see how it sounds with these vocals. So, I mean, this is a sound that you, sometimes you get with tubes as well. It really breaks up really nicely. And even though it's distorting a lot, it's very creamy and it has this beautiful saturation that rounds up the vocals. And I think they fit much better for this kind of music than just, this is a little bit polite, you know? It almost sounds like a fuzz box. I really, really love it. So in a nutshell, what have I done here? I've boosted the drive all the way up. Then I've played a little bit with the offset there to tweak the symmetry of the distortion. And for this, I went completely by ear. And then what I've done is I added the shelf gain to take away some of this fizziness in the top end. And I'm also mixing this in with the original dry signal. So let's have a listen. I'm going to play with these controls and you can hear how it sounds. you can really, really warm up or even completely obliterate your vocals, especially if you're working with aggressive music like rock, like metal. Destroyer can really be your friend and it really allows you to get tones that you would probably have to reach out for analog gear to obtain. So now let's have a listen and I invite you to have a look here at the meters and see that the perceived loudness that we get from all this processing is much, much higher than the actual dBs that we have added to our master bus. Let's have a listen. I mean, it's a massive difference. It's a huge difference. You would expect that by now I would be already overloading my master bus, but I'm not. That's because we add all this volume, all this perceived loudness with warming up the tracks, with adding harmonics, with shaving off the transients, with the tape emulations, with quadrophats, with magneto, with destroyer all these beautiful things. We're doing things that make sense for the tracks that we're using to make them sound bigger rather than just making them sound louder by just raising the fader. So these were five ways to warm up your tracks in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have loads of fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.